Is it working now? Well, let's see. All right, I think it's working now. It says go live. We're live. What's going on, everybody? Coach Chris Beck, the wise guy on Instagram. Let's see what the delay is here. So I am finally live now. It took me only about two and a half hours to figure out OBS again and read teach myself exactly how to use the software um but check it out it's configured i'm live so now i can screen share for you guys and, and i have some things plugged up for today so we'll go over that but here's video one here's video two here's video three and here is my end video four i think that's right and so we're back to number one right here and i see there's a little bit of a lag Please check your video resolution, current resolution is that, which is not optimal. Open widget. I don't know how to do any of that type of stuff, so I will ignore that for now. Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know if you guys can see this thing, because I know there is a little bit of a delay. Um, let me pop this out. Let me minimize this. All right. So we should be at on the main screen here. Um... What are we going to talk about today? Today we are going to talk about is it safe to buy from Alibaba? So we'll have a conversation about that and I'll get your guys' feedback and I'll talk about the ways I go about or how I go about the safest way of shopping on Alibaba, Alibaba and um, almost interviewing the the, the, the manufacturers that I'm shopping with, vetting them, if you will. Uh, second thing we're going to talk about is how to create a listing. Uh, I have, as you can see here, I'm going to go into number two, two. I have my screen sharing now on so you guys can see my screen and I will show you how to find a product to add to your listing or how to create your own listing. I'll give you a quick tutorial on that. We'll even jump into Jungle Scout quickly and find some products and, you know, some concepts that we want to add in. We have Alibaba here, so we'll do a quick manufacturer search. And you can do this on any of the sourcing platforms. Like I said, MainInChina.com, uh, DHgate, you name it, um, AliExpress, whatever it is that you want to do, uh, you can do it on. Uh, and then uh, we're going to also talk about how do we rank uh, on page one. I'm going to give you a little bit of information on that uh, so that you guys can start to work and put in the time necessarily to rank, necessary to rank on page one. And then uh, last but not least, uh, the ultimate is how do I increase my sales? So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But let's get right into it, guys. Uh, I'm going to just double check here. Let's go into, um, I just want to see if, I don't know where half of the thing went. So we got this up. Don't want that up. Google Chrome. Let's see. Acknowledging, what am I acknowledging here? I don't care about that. Let me just pull that down. Okay, I'm just playing around with my screen. I don't know where my chat went. I probably deleted it when I minimized it. Actually, it's probably right here. I got OBS, I got live streaming. Okay, right here. There we go. So, who knows if the chat is working. If it is, great. Uh, if it isn't, I'm sorry, guys. I can't determine what's going on but if you are on with me let me know right now here I'll tell you what I'm gonna check on my YouTube studio on my phone I'll turn off the volume so there's no sound and I'll have this going in the background let's see here let's go to YouTube gotta get functional you might as well do it real time we're live all right there we go. So I can chat with you guys here. It looks like it's just me on. <laughs> chat time. So this will be a video. You guys can watch this in the morning. All right, we're good. OK, 
Okay, so let's let's drop that out. That's where that went. That's full screen. My Alibaba.com, and let's get right into how can we make it safe for ourselves to shop on Alibaba. Well, first we have to figure out what product we want to sell on Alibaba. So whatever tools you're using, whether it's free tools and, and you're searching on Amazon to discover products or you're using Pinterest to discover products or you're using Google Trends, whatever it is, you're using to discover products that you want to sell. Once you've discovered a product and let's go into, well, baby was the category that uh, everyone was uh, following me the other day and we we discovered that baby is the most, the highest trending category right now. So let's look at baby and let's say I want to sell this product right here, thermometers for adult forehead temperature, blah, blah, blah. This is the number one selling product in baby category and it's a thermometer for adults. So now I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Alibaba. Let me just make sure I am screen sharing clip number two, which I'm not. So now I should be. We're uh, discovered that we want to sell these thermometers right here. Okay, I went to best sellers. It's the number one selling product in baby. This is not the way to discover products. This is a really high competition way to discover products. So it's not the best way. Um, Okay, you want to definitely use a tool, and you want to definitely uh, you want to definitely sort by competition and sort by uh, total sales that you want to achieve and weight and all those different criteria you want to sort by. But let's just use this as an example so that we can go to Alibaba and discover what Alibaba sellers are safe to safer or safest to source from and which uh, ones you do not want to source from. We want to want to also want to figure out what is the best way to navigate Alibaba to find products uh, and discover multiple products. And we're not going to get into negotiation with them or contacting them or anything like that today. This is just about how can we discover um, these sellers, uh, The how can we discover the safest wholesalers and manufacturers to shop from on Alibaba. So we have thermometers. We're going to type in the keyword, which is the first three words on the listing. Thermometer for adult. We're going to look in products. Thermometer for adult. And up is going to come 3,429 results. Okay. Now these are going to have a blend of it's kind of like for, it's kind of like Amazon. I mean, reality is Alibaba is a, a a spitting image of Amazon in that you have two types of sellers. You have sellers that are, are trade assured and verified suppliers, verified as in the check mark like Prime. They're verified sellers uh, on the Alibaba platform, and then you have sellers on this platform who are not verified in the same standard. They're like fulfillment by merchants in that they're registered, but they're not necessarily verified. The verification process comes with um, qualifi qualifying the manufacturer. Are they a long-term seller? What's their reviews? What's their rating? You know, are they new? So what standards do you want to put in place? What standards would I recommend that you put in place right away to ensure that the suppliers you're sourcing from are legitimate suppliers? First one you want to do is on the left hand side you have your category uh, supplier types. You have the option for trade assurance okay, and you have the option for verified suppliers. Okay, when you click these, you're going to notice that the results will decrease drastically. So the first one I want to make sure that I'm doing, if I'm looking to source from a reputable supplier or, or a better supplier, less risk supplier on Amazon or on Alibaba, excuse me, is I want to source from verified suppliers. 
So I'm going to click the verified supplier option and let's see if it has a change in the total. Is it giving me a change here? Don't see anything yet. Okay. And then I also want trade assurance. Trade assurance is the ability, ability to pay using the Alibaba platform, which in itself has the ability to um, get a refund uh, and it's a safer payment method if you're using the Alibaba platform. It's almost their version of PayPal. So with PayPal, PayPal is 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 a, uh, a, a, a again another safe way to to pay suppliers. I don't recommend using money transfers. I don't recommend any of those methods um, at all. I wouldn't do it. I would stay away from those. It's and and if you listen to the most of the, most of the people who get burned by Alibaba, they've transferred money, they've wired money, all that type of stuff. Um, I would recommend using PayPal because then you can have PayPal go and get your money back. Uh, it's almost like having your money in a um, uh, whatever it's called. I forget what it's called. Where it's in, it's in limbo. What's that word? Hit me up with that word right now, um, and it will come to me. And same thing with trade trade assurance is you can pay through their platform. And, and actually, a lot of sellers on Ali, Alibaba who are trade assurance want you to use trade assurance as well. So you can add in trade assurance if you want that. It eliminates a lot more. Sometimes I add trade assurance, but at the end of the day, what I'm doing is I'm paying via PayPal. But it's it's a good thing to see uh, what sellers are on, are on trade assurance and what sellers are not. I'm gonna take trade insurance off for this particular demonstration. Okay, and then the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna go and you wanna determine, and you, on the left side it has, you know, okay, so here on the left side we have categories like ready to ship, there's all these different product types, minimum order amounts, price points. <clears throat> so you can filter in all the different things, ISO standard ratings, product quality control. So if you're, wor you're worried about quality, you can you can select different quality standards and different certifications. Um, and then also, if you need your product to have FDA regulations, CE regulations, you can select those standards as well. Very important to do if you're searching for an electronic product. You might want to make sure that it has a, C a CE standard um, verification. So those are the filters that I'm going to put in. So now... Usually, I don't know why it's not showing me the total options I have left. Usually at the top, it'll tell me how many matches I have. But where is it? So if it's showing anywhere else. Anyway, so now I have uh, I have a assortment of of research results that are products that are verified. Manufacturers, suppliers that are verified, and um, I can also what I can also do is I can I can also filter out. I believe I can. I can filter out new suppliers as well. So what I also do to make sure that the suppliers I'm dealing with before I reach out to them are safe to buy from is I want to deal with suppliers that have a minimum of three years experience. Now it. it it doesn't mean I have never dealt with suppliers or factories that have one year experience, but I, if I'm going to look into a factory that has one year experience on Alibaba, I am going to be more skeptical. I am going to look into that actual company uh, a lot more. I'll actually look into see if that company has reviews, bad reviews, all that type of stuff. So I'm looking for seven years experience this supplier started on Alibaba seven years ago that's what I want to see this Ali this supplier started on Alibaba four years ago that's what I want to see I also want to see their transaction level when I look at their transaction level as you can see in the pop-up here I'll zoom in okay this is their reviews essentially this is not people rating them but this is how many people are buying from this particular manufacturer here it's going to show you a transaction level of 400,000 plus from this transaction, uh, this supplier in the last six months. So obviously this supplier is selling a ton of those thermometers and thermometers like. OK, 
okay? And, uh, and then here's the reviews. You can see that if you look at the reviews, this supplier gets five star review, um, uh, re five star reviews. They're getting f almost five star as far as their delivery times, and they're getting almost five star as or five star as as per their product quality. So these are all points of information that you want to look at when you're dealing with factories. Let's see if we can find some that don't get the same amount. So here we got 4.2. Here we got a 4. Okay, 4.8. Excuse me. Here we got some some 4.8s, fives. So all these ones for that are selling this. Here we got a 4.1. So not really delivering fast enough. Not really the best quality when it comes to to their products. Supplier service probably their best asset. Okay, 4.0. See if we even get some threes. Let's see if we can get some threes here. For the most part, they're all pretty good as far as their overall ratings. Now you can you can sometimes take that information with a grain of salt because you really honestly don't know. I've heard of stories where um, you know in in China factories are buying ratings or they're they're paying for reviews similar to what they're what they're doing on. Where they what they used to do on Amazon. So um, Amazon stopped that. And but to be honest, I don't know if Alibaba has put any measures in place to prevent manufacturers from um, paying for reviews. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, that can skew the transaction levels if they're somehow creating a transaction, false transaction amount, or a false review amount. But here's what I know is that Alibaba suppliers uh, pay upwards five to ten thousand dollars a year to be on Alibaba. It's not like us with a thirty dollar monthly membership, three hundred sixty dollars a year. Um, these guys have to pay three thousand dollars just to be uh, verified on this platform. Okay, uh, I think they can be on the platform by registering and paying a very minimal amount, but to be verified and whatever, these guys have to pay a, a pretty decent amount of money. Um, again, that might not be a lot, uh, so you have to look at the year's experience. For example, this one has 14 years experience on the Alibaba.com platform. So those are very important, important points to, to look for when you're trying to choose a factory to deal with. So now I'm looking for this product right here which on Amazon is a three-star rated product. So only two ratings. It only got three stars. So that's not really that great of, of ratings. One good one, one bad one. Let's see what the bad one said. So the bad review said, don't buy this product. It is a piece of junk. Wildly inconsistent temperatures. Don't waste your money. Okay, so we don't want that. So maybe what we'll do now is we're going to look up thermometer in all categories, all departments. We're going to look up thermometer, therm, and we're going to look for thermometers. There we go. Just the main keyword. Let's see if I have my Jungle Scout turned on, which is my drop down menu. I believe so. There we go. This is going to tell me how many sales this the sellers on page one for this keyword are averaging or getting per month. We'll wait for it to load here. Uh -huh. All right, looks like we're going good here. So let me jump screen here, let's put one. So what do you guys think so far? How am I doing? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you're smashing that like button right now. I'm getting better, and I'm going to continue to get better. We are at number seven, 007 of our every day going live on YouTube, Amazon live show. And we're teaching how to sell on Amazon. I'm teaching you guys how to make money. If you have questions that are at a lower level than this, maybe you're just getting started, let me know. Comment on this video and let me know where you're at as far as an Amazon seller. Let me know if you want to know an easier way to get started. Maybe you don't want to spend $3,500 on product right now and source and import from China. Although it's not that hard. It's, it's actually as easy as ordering off Amazon. It's as easy as that to send inventory to Amazon for your store. So 
Um, but let me know where you're at so that if you need help, then I can give you some hand. Um, but make sure you smash that like button. And if you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button as well. All right, so let's get back into this. We have populated Jungle Scout and Jungle Scout uh, thermometers. Uh, this particular app is called their Chrome extension. And what it does is when I type in keywords on Amazon, just on the Amazon platform, doesn't matter which one, .com, .ca, you name it, this particular uh, Chrome extension evaluates what's on the page and renders all the information into one spot and it'll tell me how much each seller are selling of each product that's on this particular page. So for example, I typed in thermometers and if we go to this page a little bit, let me just move this out of the way. There we go. Oops, I don't want that. Hey, what did I do? Let's go back here. Thermometers. Okay. Here are the different thermometers that we see. So we see best sellers are sponsored listings. The first four are sponsored. Then right here we have the best seller again at $53, only two reviews. But it's the number one selling thermometer on Amazon right now. And he only has two reviews, which is remarkable. Okay, and his brand is called Thermometer for Adult. There's no real brand associated with it. So it's just a generic thermometer. Okay, not the greatest rate ratings, but it's a best selling product and it looks really nice. Those images make it look really appealing. I like the baby blue. I like the white on white background. Everything is clear, easy to read, the little hand here. Those are great things. So let's zoom in there. Easy to set, it looks like it's easy to read. It really just looks easy to use, okay? Um, then we got a nice, nicer one here, but a bad review on it, no price point. And then we have some that work with the phone. We have some higher, more expensive ones here. 79 has two five-star reviews. Then we have uh, then we have $49 ones, you name it, all the way down to, you know, $20 ones, really basic ones. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now when I click my Chrome extension, let's load that back up. It'll load quickly. It's going to show me that the average sales for thermometers, the keyword thermometer, is 134 on this particular page. So if you were to look at all the sellers and add up the averages of what they're selling per month, they're doing an average of 134. Now that being said, the top sellers, if you look right here in this column, I'll zoom in here, the number one seller, the one, the baby blue that we looked at, is 910 units per month at $49,000 per month, Jasney Lou is selling of this particular thermometer. And considering that Jasney Lou only is the number one product, there's five sellers on their listing, so you have to divide that number by five, Okay, there's five sellers, so he's getting piggybacked. Let's go back here. I understand why it's flipping screens now because I am doing that with my mouse. So let's just jump here quickly. <clears throat> okay, uh, that number one listing is doing 49,000. Now let's go down to that $79 listing. Here's the $79 listing. You know, uh, you know two reviews, uh, five star reviews again no no competition but they're doing 211 units a month at sixteen thousand dollars in revenue a month on that particular product okay and you can keep looking this guy with a 69 dollar one hap shop uh, how many sellers are on it so we have one seller on this one we have eight sellers on this one we have one seller on these, let's go, these are all private label sellers, single sellers, 200 units on that. We got one seller on this one at the number eight spot doing 20,419 units per month. We have one seller on this one doing 750 units per month. Okay, fees are five bucks, $20 price points. So I mean, I can zoom out so we can see a bigger view of that. But that's how you can tell if it's private label or if it's not a lot of times or if it's just being hijacked. Okay, so now we'll jump out of that. We know, okay, we want to launch that, that particular product. So now we want to go on to Alibaba and we want to start looking for products that are very similar to that particular one. We can even go thermometer. Uh, we can just do the keyword thermometer. Let's take a look at that. I still have my filters on. 
The mommer did not match anything. Let's try that again. Products thermometer. Thermometer. Giving me a hard time. Why are you doing this to me? Let's go back to the main page. Thur. Thermometer, digital thermometer, sure. Let's go with digital thermometer. These are a little. Thermometer, temperature instrument, sure. All right. Four. Verified. Thermometer. Not too sure what is going on here. Let me go back to alvicabla.com. That one it probably did something to it, so it wasn't populating properly. Thermometer. There we go. Let's go back one. I don't know what I did there, but it was messing up. Okay, now we are uh, gonna put thermometer. Just a basic keyword. I don't want to pull up just a basic keyword. Thermometer. Thermometer. Thermometer for adults. All right. So it doesn't want to take just thermometer. So I'm taking thermometer for adults. I can click the thermometer category. So maybe let's click that. And let's add it and verify it. And, and you might want to pay through trade assurance. So you can add in, like I said, trade assurance. Okay, you might want to do CE um, approved or FDA approved if you're selling on the US platform. Okay, now you want to, now the next thing you can do, just kind of one more, um, one more match is that you can sort by product or you can sort by suppliers uh, specifically. I'm going to remember how to switch it over to, uh, I just want to see the actual uh, suppliers themselves uh, and I don't want to see the by thermometer because when you search for thermometer for example is I might see Hangzhou 10 times okay or Shenzhen or sorry Hangzhou is the city but I might see this particular one Huan Medical Health Instruments Co or I might see uh, Medical Instrument Factory or I might see uh, Chang Kung Technical Technologically Co multiple times uh, instead of, I can, I can filter it so that I just see the manufacturers and only the manufacturers one time, uh, per se. So let me see if I can switch to that. Um, let's go to switch for countries, supplier. Verification type, personal, clear all filters, best match. Unless they've already switched it to that, might have already done that. Okay, now here's the thermometer that I'm looking for. This is the one I want. On here it's saying $20. I'm going to click this particular listing. It's verified. And I got one year though. So I'm not happy with one year, so I'm going to jump out on that. 
Okay, I don't want to take one year option on that. This one here has 15 years. Little different product. Okay, this one here, pretty nice, nice case to it. Has one year. Um, here we have another one, two years. Here we have another one, 13 years. That's not a bad one. So let's look into this one right here. It's $40 a unit, so that's a little bit over our price point. But we might be able to look at this product and see if for volume purchases, they are doing um, a minimum of 20 units. For volume purchases, what, what price point could they do? You can order it without contacting the manufacturer direct. But really, once you've picked a few of the therm uh, thermometers that you like or the products that you like, then you would reach out to the supplier and send them your contact template, uh, your negotiation template, and start negotiating on price. Because the reality is these price points that are on here, they're all negotiable. And, you know, for example, you'll see this product for $20 and this product right here for 40 and they're going to tell you about quality and they're going to tell you about their company and they're going to tell you all the reasons, their first level of handling your uh, concerns. You would ignore those and you would still continue to negotiation, nego negotiate with them or walk away and have them come chasing you down. Um, but that is ultimately how you make sure that when you're shopping on Alibaba, it's a 50-50 game as far as safety. Until you start to use the features like verified supplier, trade assurance, um, checking their transaction levels, and checking how long they've been operating on Alibaba for. Those are the first parts. And then in the second half, when you're dealing with them, do they respond to you quickly? Do uh, they speak English? Is, it, is, there, is, there, is communicating with them easy or is it difficult? Um, how, what are their responses like uh, when they're contacting you? How are they responding to you? All those, those interactions play a huge part in determining if you should work with them or not. Um, and then ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, um, when you take a risk, uh, when you put the deposit down, you're putting 30% down, Follow up with them, have them send you photos as they're working on your um, your production. Have them send you information uh, how it's going along the way uh, and work with them. Start to build a relationship so that uh, ultimately at the end, you've established a relationship and you feel that you trust them. And there are even some more steps in between that you can do to make sure that you know that's the right manufacturer for you like calling them, give them a call. There's nothing wrong with actually phoning the manufacturers. If you want them to call you, they will call you. You just have to give them your phone number, they will contact you. Um, and ask them for referrals if you want. Uh, ask them to send you pictures, uh, go live with them on the phone. You can do all those things. Uh, it will be um, going above and beyond. Personally, I don't go that high. Um, once I get a good feel for the manufacturer after doing all these things, um, I usually pull the trigger and move on and execute with those factories uh, when I buy stuff. All right, uh, let's go into number two. So number two, we're talking about, hey, if you have any questions, let me know right now. What's going on? Oh, hey, Tone, what's going on? Good to see you on here. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for posting. Yeah, if you're interested in selling on Amazon, let me know. Shoot me a message. Join my course. It's $100 right now. Get you in, get you 10 hours of content and private access to my club. Um, so, and now is the time. Right now is the time because a lot of new sellers are able to get their products established. Products are flying off the shelves on Amazon. So you can get into competitive markets and and make sales, which is a big, big thing, especially if you're sending in the right products like what I'm talking about right here, thermometers and, and stuff like that. Uh, but good to see you. 
Next up, we are going to talk about how to create a listing on Amazon. So how to create a listing on Amazon. Um, I have, I'm going to give you very basic information. This is all in my course and I don't want to give too much of that away uh, because y you want to know, you want, you probably, you need to, creating a listing is the most important part next to the product being a high demand product that you're sending to Amazon. So product number one is like real estate. you got to make sure the location, the product is great. And then the mo second most important thing is your listing images and, and your bullet points. Creating a listing. But I'm going to give you the basics on how to know if you can create a listing before you go and buy your products on um, on Alibaba or before you source your inventory. you got to make sure that you're eligible to sell that inventory, one. And then two, you got to create a listing and make sure that your listing is rendered and it's and it's it's ready to ready to go on Amazon and that you can create a shipping plan. Before you pull the trigger, you got to make sure that you get all the way to the end step with is, which is creating that shipping plan. Once you've created that shipping plan and Amazon says it's a go, yeah, send us your inventory, then and only then do you send any factory or manufacturer a deposit. Okay, so let's get right into that right now. All right, so we've chosen a product. We can get rid of that. We're out of, of Alibaba. So now what you're going to do is you're going to log on to your Seller Central. Once you log on to your Seller Central account, you're going to go to Catalog on the left here, and then you're going to request Add a Product. You're going to click Add a Product, and it's going to bring you to this box screen right here, the little Amazon box. That's where you want to be. Okay, now when you're creating or adding a new product, you don't need to search existing listings on Amazon. You want to simply add a product not sold on Amazon because you're doing private label, you're creating your own brand. So obviously, it does not exist on Amazon. So you're going to have to create from scratch your own brand. But for now, let's say um, we want to check that we can sell thermometers. Okay, so we're going to type in the keyword thermometer, and it's going to bring up a page of these different thermometers. Okay, and we might go thermometer for adults. And that should bring up the blue one. Here we go, and these are the ones. So now I can look at that, and at the far right, it's going to show me variations. If I had any restrictions, it would show me this word right here, show limitations. And it would give me an option to sell this product. Okay. These ones right here, so here we go. This is the variations. Um, I can choose the type. I want to sell new, and I want to sell this variation. So now I can click that and add it to my inventory. Okay. Uh, show limitations. What are my limitations for selling this particular product? Well, you are not approved to list in this product category for collectible, refurbished, or conditioned. But I am approved to list in this category for new. So again, notice it only is collectibles, refurbished, or refurbished condition products we cannot sell. Okay, don't mistake that with you can't sell this product. We can sell this product. I can add this var this variation to my listing. I'm looking, okay, here we go. So here's one, the brand Taylor Precision. Okay, now if you go to the right, you're going to see apply to sell, which means I currently am not eligible to sell this product. But if I click apply to sell, it's going to bring up an approval to sell Taylor Precision products. I can click that. It might be automatic approval. If it isn't automatic approval, it will bring me up to a brand approval registry. I'm not going to click it. You guys can look in my other videos about that. Um, but those are two ways, to, one way to get quickly approved or you would have to request a brand approval from the factory itself. Okay, so we're going to go back to, uh, we'll close that. We're going to go back to products that we are eligible to approve. Okay, apply to sell, apply to sell. Thermometers for adults. There we go. Show variations. Sell this product. I would click this and... I will, sorry, I want to add new, then I would click sell this variation, and it will add this product. It brings up this particular screen, which essentially is an addition of this product into my inventory. 
I got to let them know what I want to do new, which is my only option. I can't do the other ones. And then how much do I want to sell it for? I would just put the existing price. Uh, do I want Amazon to fulfill it? So FBA or do I want to do FBM? It's automatically FBA. And then once I add in those criteria, I can do save and finish and that product is added to my inventory. But at the end of the day, what this means for me as a seller is that yes, I can sell thermometers. I can sell the thermometer listing, which is important. You want to check if you can sell thermometers uh, in your store because you might not be eligible to even sell electronics. So this is information you have to collect. Okay, so now we're going to go back to add products. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to create a listing on Amazon. So now you're going to create your own brand. You're going to go, I am adding a product not sold on Amazon. Okay, now you're going to, it's going to ask you, what product are you adding? You can go, uh, okay, this product is, these are my favorite ones. Uh, you can go search category, thermometer. Okay, it's got the different thermometers here, baby thermometers, etc. Thermometer for adult. Let's see if that comes up. Thermometer ear, digital thermometers. So this is what I want to sell it under. Digital thermometers, it gives you a sub listing uh, directory and that's the one that I want. So I'm going to select that category and now it's going to populate a larger set of information that I would enter in. And I, there's only a few things you actually have to enter in in order to create a listing. One is really important that you need a barcode so you have to source barcodes. Uh, but you want to give your product a name, okay? It can be the name of your your brand, so you can go, I don't know, um, we're going to call this thermometer, um, su what's called, hot body thermo, okay? That's going to be the product name, digital, digital thermometer, therm thermometer, I don't even know how it's bad today. You can edit this later, so keep it simple for now. In fact, you might even want to keep it down to three or four keywords. Your brand could be in the beginning if you want it there, and then you could put digital thermometer second, or you can take your brand out and just put the name of the product right here uh, and your listing uh, title right there. And then your brand might be hot body, uh, or it might be your storefront. You can call it your storefront or your hot body, and, and the manufacturer might be hot body because you might be the manufacturer in that the manufacturer in China is making it, but you are the actual um, brand, so you can put the manufacturer as you. You can give it a part number if the manufacturer has a part number for that particular thermometer that you're buying. I would re recommend throw it in there. So we'll use SB-122 as an example. SB-122. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, the next one you want to do is you want to go to, hold on. When multiple seller has the same product with digital listing. Okay, advanced view. Okay, so now that's the first one. Now, you'll notice that um, it won't let me save and finish here because there's more information I have to add. Up at the very top, well, let's go zoom in. See this little uh, alert button? That's telling you that there's one more, in, more information in this particular section that they need you to add. So you click on that. Anything with a border, for example, this is the condition of the product. We want to sell this in new condition. And this is the price. We want to sell this for $59. Or we want to do an introductory price of $39.99. Or $30, $35 even. And quantity we don't worry about. Amazon, because we're doing Amazon fulfillment, we're just going to leave that there. And then, and then when you're fulfilling your inventory, then that's when you put in your quantity. Okay. So now we've filled out that. Now it has more vital information back in our very first section, but that's all you need to add. And then you do need to add an image before your listing can go live. You have to upload the, your images of the listing. So make sure you go get some, you need a quality image of your product with a white background. Uh, and it needs to be a image you own. Don't steal one from Google. Uh, do not make that mistake of stealing a image that is copyright protected or whatever. Um, make sure that you're using your own image. So I would recommend you have the factory send you um, a picture of the 
thermometer, uh, a real life picture of the thermometer. Just tell them to send you a picture of the thermometer on a, on a white background. Take that image and Photoshop it. Take out the background and just make it plain white and just the image only or hire someone to help you do that for you. But you just need one for now to get your, your listing to go live. Okay. Once you have that image, it can go live. So make sure that you do that. And then go back to vital information. And you need to get yourself some UPC barcodes. Here you're going to have all these barcode options. You want to choose UPC. Then you want to buy some UPC barcodes. You can Google UPC barcodes. Okay, and there's different kinds of barcodes. You want a GS1 barcode, so buy cheap barcodes. Buybarcodescheap.com is an advertised site. Dear customers, here is a barcode. You want the authentic GS1 codes. Um, 100 barcodes, get 10 free, you can buy now. Once you order that, you're gonna get in your email a list of barcodes. You're gonna keep those filed away every time you use it. Every time you use a barcode, you're going to just indicate what you use that barcode on. You know, I usually keep it in an Excel file, have all my 100 barcodes, and then to the right, I'm always just updating what that barcode is, is saved for. So now you have your barcode, you're gonna go back to your Amazon listing, and you're going to put in the barcode right here. Uh, once your barcode's in there, now this is gonna be live, it's gonna give you save and finish, and then your listing is live. You'll see it in, and it'll pop up in your inventory, and you now will be ready to do a, a shipping plan to Amazon. So that's how you do it, guys. That's how you create a listing for your product. Um, once that listing is created, then you're going to have to figure out how do I optimize my listing, which also, which, which ultimately brings us to our number three topic, which is how do you or how do I rank uh, my Amazon product? How do I rank on, on Amazon? How do I get to page one? That's what rank means. Rank means every product is given a number. And that number corresponds to, we'll go back here. Let's go to, so let's get out of this. Let's go to, go back here. So let's just go one. Okay, so every product is given a number, and that number is their rank, the rank of the product within its category. And sometimes your product will have multiple ranks. If it has a subcategory that it's sitting in, like if you're, for example, using thermometers and the very subcategory is digital thermometers, then um, when you're in digital thermometers, you have a rank for being in that subcategory, but you also have a rank for the parent category, which is industrial scientific so you have a rank in both categories so you might be ranked like 2000 under industrial scientific but for digital therm thermometers you might be ranked like number five okay so in all industrial scientific products under that primary or the main category is everything in that entire um, category and then for the subcategory is just specific to that niche Okay, so now uh, you have to learn how to rank that product. In order to rank that product, you have to um, be able to optimize your listing. Okay, and so we talk about optimizing listing as one of the primary ways to rank your product because you want it to get seen. So you have to you have to give yourself keywords. What keywords are best for my product? Okay, and you can go on to Amazon. Let me just share this for you. Three. You can go on to Amazon and you can start to study other sellers and their listings and you can start to discover what keywords are they using to, per, to, to rank their product. Because really at the end of the day, the names that you give your products, the keywords, the, the title is ultimately the keywords that are people that are searching the most popular keywords or sometimes what you'll use, or sometimes you'll use a little more niche. But those keywords, for example, thermometer for adult, that's what a lot of people are searching when they're th searching thermometer. That's one way to to write a great title is to do research on, under the listing and start to write down all these keywords that people are using. And there are tools under there that you can actually even get rid of duplicate words. You can put all these words in there, and then it'll tell you the 
all the words, what's being used the most to what's being used the least, and then you can start to compose and write your title. Hygrometer, something like that, so firmometer. These might be keywords used in the back end, so when someone looks up firmometer, yours shows up. But your title will be specific to what your product is, and it will be specific to maybe what people want. Um, I have a clever way of actually putting together a title in my course. Uh, I talk about the, the pull position, the pull position, like the Indiana 500, the pull position of your of your listing, and as in, and just how important each spot is. So if your listing title takes a total of 12 words, the first word is the first spot or first pull position. To the 12th word is the least important, the 12th spot. Okay, and how you should position the best words in your title, not duplicate them. You don't need them in there twice. You also need a hook or you need a statement that grabs someone's attention. It's a promise. And then you need more keywords. But all that all has to be written and you have to study that information in order to get the perfect listing. Uh, and not that any of these are perfect, but I mean, when I'm reading some of these, infrared, thermometer for adults, babies, Kids, babies, non-contact, digital, forehead, thermometer. All these are keywords, important keywords. Instant readings is, is your hook. Instant readings. Ear thermometer with blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, you know, and, and I think you can even write a better listing than that. So, uh, you would study these listings first. Second thing you would do, and this might be the first thing you do, is you would study the images. You would look at this image, okay, this person is selling a lot. We know that. They're selling 900. Why are they selling so much? Well, first off, the color of this thermometer is, is, is baby-friendly. So it's for adults. Adults don't care, but babies are going to like that. It's not going to scare them away. Um, and then I love the background. It's white with a blue listing, and the, and the actual uh, reading itself is easy to read. So when I actually zoom on this, it's a nice, easy-to-read product. Okay, and then their other listings are their infographics. It's the same thermometer I see on the side. It's got, it's got the standard. So I want to make sure my factory does the same thing. Non-contact thermometer. I want to make sure my factory has that stamped on there. I want to make sure I have the CE and I want to have the ROHS uh, um, uh, approvals. Uh, I maybe I want the ABFs for the plastic. I want that approval. So I want that um, confirmation of the type of plastic they use. And you want to ask your factory about these specific details that that they should be sending you. Okay, and you got to discover these things on your own because those are important things to have. Uh, they're also important to have in the manual, on the box, you name it. Okay, here's another infographic: a happy baby versus a sad baby. Different readings. So educate yourself about your product that you're about to get into and start to get intimate and obsessed with that product. What does it do? How does it benefit? This is obviously obviously a long-term product solution. This is a long lifestyle product. Once I, once I invest in this, this product is going to be an investment for years and years to come. Um, I'm, I, it's not going to dive bomb off a cliff. It's, people are not going to suddenly stop buying this product. My sales may dip a little bit. I may need to get more competitive or I may need to improve the product. But I'm looking at this product. As long as I can grasp page one of this product, I may only need to improve the packaging. I may only need to improve my listing photos. But the product can remain the same. Okay, but look, you're looking at these. I'm looking at these. Uh, this infographic tells me about the product, function buttons, infrared sensor, starting measurement, you know, the trigger, battery door. Okay, my only concern is it a cheap plastic or is it like a, a quality plastic? Does coronavirus stick to it or not? You know, those things might be important at this time and age, you know, to add that information to here. Um, again, you probably have to be, um, you would have, to, I would say you would have to vet your information, make sure that what you're putting out there is safe and you're not making any claims. Okay, don't make any claims that your product does something. By looking at that battery door, that's to me that might be a faulty battery door, so I might not be happy with it. The way it closes, okay, I might want something more permanent or more something that is is a lockable battery door. But this is probably a cheap cost product, so there probably is a benefit of how inexpensive it is to get this particular thermometer. And then obviously the one complaint was 
on one similar to this was the accuracy. So make sure that you are verifying the accuracy of the product. And there you go, measuring distances of it. How long, I, I would say this is how far it has to be in order to get a reading. So great photos. So photos are going to be critical, but obviously your first photo has to be like a white background photo. And then after that, you can have all these extra photos. Okay. Uh, and then next up, your bullet points are going to be another way that you're going to rank it because in your bullet points, you're going to start to fill it with keywords that people search for when they're searching for these products online. Fast and accurate. You know, these are statements, benefits. Um, features and benefits that you'll 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 mention um you always want to get emotional when people are reading these they have the first one again pull position this has got to be your best one it's got to be the most compelling statement about your product in the very first spot because if it's not they're not going to read the second or third or fourth they're going they're not going to get to um temperature warning or they might not get to body mode if this is not the most compelling information you give them right away so you have to hook them right away on your product um, this is going to help you rank on page one because what it's going to do is it's going to sell your product and people are going to start to buy your product and that's what you want because rank is dependent on sales if you sell then you rank you continue to climb up the, the ladder uh, of ranking to first place or climb that hill um, 900 sales in this category is in the first spot. So um, two, two opinions with that. One, uh, you're going to um, know that this product has an opportunity to sell 900 units a month. You're going to have the ability to capture some of those sales if your product is, is the same but better. <clears throat> That's going to be important. Now, they may have a better brand than you. That brand might be more familiar. And those are areas that you have to evaluate and determine if you want to compete against them or not. Okay, But uh, if you end up competing with them, you're competing for what they're currently taking of that market. You're now going to try to take some of their sales. And how are you going to do that? You're going to do that with better images. I'm already looking at this listing and I know already a few things I can do better than them. I can also promote my brand. I don't like their brand, Durlites. I can probably get a better brand for this product. I can also on the product probably give it um, uh, branding on the product itself. I don't see one on this image. So I'd like to put an actual brand on there. I would probably go with a brand name only and no image. Um, and I would look into a brand that would complement this particular product. And all those things are going to help me rank. Uh, and, and I'm going to probably think about other color options, although that's a really great color. But I'm going to look at other color options too, baby. Very light tones like this, but in other options as well. Maybe a yellow, maybe something like that. You never know. Um, and then these bullet points, I'm, I would do a way better job of promoting the, myself as a company um, and how much we care for our customers and <clears throat> I would promote my satisfaction guarantee I would promote my money-back satisfaction guarantee I would promote which is obviously Amazon's guarantee we'll go back to the image here so I'm still looking at the bullets on the right and I'm just spitballing here but I would probably put some things in there to capture the eyeballs for viewers, um, what can I do there? And then keywords. I would use tools to compile two to 300 keywords and probably use the best 50 in this area right here as well, including my title. Um, and then I would look at the customer reviews. I would look at the customer reviews and discover what customers want. Now, the unfortunate thing is this person only has two reviews. So I'm going to have to study all the reviews out there and I'm going to have to study what people are saying is great and what the emotion I can get from their reviews capture this product and I'm going to put those in my bullet points. So for example, this person is saying, I ordered this to check for infection, but it does more than that. You can measure the temperature of anything. That includes the back of your wife's throat or the grilled chicken you are cooking for dinner. It's an awesome gadget to keep handy, okay? 
reviewed in Canada. And this one says, I am thankful I bought this as an extra measure of security. So, I mean, that first one is pretty cool. I'm going to look for more because, you know, what am I, what am I targeting? You know, multi-use. Am I targeting multi-use? You know, and then I'm going to build multiple bullets. I'm not just going to do it once and leave it. I'm going to try different points of emphasis in that first spot. Different points of emphasis in that second spot. What's going on, Healthy Empress? Good to see you on here. Smash that like button. Thank you, guys. I um, Sorry, when I look to my right, it's because I'm looking at my chats down there now. Because I am using my official tool. How do you guys like it? Let me know how you guys like this interaction, this level of interaction so far. Um, do me a favor, who's ever on right now, I want to see how long the lag is. So please right now type the word um, thank you. Type the word thank you. And let me see how, how many seconds it takes to pop up. I'm counting. Okay, let's try it again because I didn't see anything. Uh, I'm just trying to see how long comments take to show up from when I say something because there is a little bit of a, a delay for you guys watching versus me talking. So whatever, type in the word, uh, type in the word, uh, great stuff, or type in anything right now. All right, we'll jump over here. All right. Well, I will, maybe you guys have jumped off. I don't know. <laughs> we'll try this again. Now that I'm back at it, everyone's probably sleeping. So now that I'm back at it, we'll try how long it takes for people to get on and off of this later on. So we've talked about is it safe to buy from Alibaba? how to make it safe, how to create a listing, how to rank your product, bullet points, photos, and sales, and reviews. Ranking, just back on that topic about ranking a product, bullet points um, help you make sales. Photos help you make sales. Um, reviews help you make sales. So the more you have of all of those points of emphasis, the more sales you will make. Bullet points help you make sales, okay? Photos help you make sales. Reviews help you make sales. Questions, the, uh, the questions that people leave on your product can help you make sales. So these four areas help you make sales. Sales help you rank. So if you're trying to rank on Amazon, let me go back to Amazon.ca. If you're trying to rank your product on Amazon, you need to gain um, sales. You need to make your photos great. You need to make your bullet points great. Uh, you need to uh, make get more reviews. Uh, and you need to get more questions about your product. You need to get all those things going on your product. You need to make your product a community when you're online. So share your product on different platforms. Go on different platforms about your product. So in the thermometer world, I'm a baby. I'm chatting on baby. I'm going to probably chat for a week and then I'm going to drop gems. Hey, you know, oh man, I just bought this thermometer. It was awesome. I love it. I checked my meat with it and I checked the back of my wife's throat with it and my baby's temperature has been amazing. Um, and just keep dropping your product, but go conversate in communities. Have 50, 100 communities going at the same time so that it's easy for you to drop, you know, uh, a promo once every community that you're in. Oh, yeah, no, I love this particular product or I love that particular product. Be that guy. Uh, but don't spam. Okay. Uh, get reviews. Use, um, use tools out there in the market, in the world, 
that are available to help automate the system of following up with your customers so that process allows you to get more reviews because the more reviews you have on your product, the quicker your product will or the faster your product will rise in the rankings to first place. Okay, and ultimately you want your product to be in first place, which means you're in the first spot on page one, which ultimately means you are getting the most sales. Okay, so again, um, how to increase my Amazon sales, which has to do with how do I rank. To increase your Amazon sales, you need to make sure your photos are the best. You need to make sure your listing points or your bullets are the best. You need to make sure that you're getting reviews on your product. Okay, you're getting five star or four star reviews. Okay, you want to make sure that you're getting five or four star reviews. Nothing below that is acceptable. If it's below that, you have to improve your customer's experience. And you need to make sure you're getting questions on your product. So we'll take again thermometer. Don't know if this guy has any questions on his product. Let's just take a look. I don't see any. Let's just go with somebody who's actually selling a lot of thermometer, thermometers. So let's go to this guy right here. He sold 900 reviews worth of thermometers. Okay, right here, he has his reviews. So he's got three and a half star rating. Not bad, probably a little bit better than that if I were to click in there. But right here, he has questions. So you want questions on your product because <clears throat> this is the community board for your product. Let me just show you this. Questions on your product. This is community board for your product. This is where people can come and talk about your product, ask questions, and you can answer them. Okay. Again, I was just right here, right here. Doesn't matter where. Where was I? Okay. Um, let's choose this guy. So we'll choose this guy right here. Reviews, answer questions. This is the community board for your product. So people have asked questions, French or English. Does this thermometer measure to one-tenth of a degree? That could be an important point to mention in your bullets. When you come to your question area, these are what people want to know that your product does. So you can gather all that information and really come together, put together a strong, strong um, selling uh uh, sales strategy for your product through the bullets but this is your community for your products so the more questions you get that ultimately means the more products you'll sell because people will come here for their Q&A oh it does do that okay great they'll buy it oh it does do that okay great they buy it did anyone else see a memory temperature the first time <clears throat> they turned it on I want to be sure this wasn't used before I honestly can't remember and so you can answer these questions it'll come to you in your email but also other people who have um, bought this product will get emails from Amazon until they opt out. Uh, and they can also answer these questions for you. And that's how you see a lot of extra answers on each of these questions. Okay, so questions. The question section is what you want to always improve on. Let's figure out how you can improve on that area. Um, and then let's go back. So we have photos, bullet points, reviews, questions, your price point, okay, it might help you increase sales, lower your profits a little bit, you, you might get a jump in sales, okay, that's very low, I'd actually probably put that a, a lower part on what you should do to try to increase your FBA sales, especially if you're a beginner, <coughs> excuse me, you want to have, I should get something to drink, give me a second here. Especially if you're a beginner. Give me a second before I finish that answer. Let me jump on Instagram and go live right now. Give these people on Instagram. I've got 16 followers right now. So I'm going to go live, tell them to jump onto my show, see how I'm doing. All right. What's going on, everybody? This is Coach Chris Beck, the wise guy, right up here on Instagram. I'm live right now on YouTube. You guys should jump on this show because this is a really good one. I'm getting better and better at this, guys, and it's exciting. I am sharing screens now and showing you guys today, showing everybody how to do, how to safely buy from Alibaba. 
source your products, how to create a listing. I show you the overview and details on how to create your listing and all my little tips and trips, tips and tricks. And then right now we're talking about how do you rank on Amazon, your product, and really what ranking is and how do you do that. And ultimately, how do you increase your Amazon sales? So jump on to YouTube right now, Coach Respect on YouTube. So we're talking about increasing our Amazon FBA sales. And if you're new, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and we will grow that channel together. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to jump off Instagram in a second here so that I can make sure that I am answering any questions that arise. But to increase your sales, you got to have great photos, great bullet points, your reviews got to be five and four star reviews. You got to get your questions being asked about your products up. You can work with your price point and pocket it at different prices. I'll give you a little bit of story, but for years and years and years, I had my number one product pocketed at a specific price point and was making a decent amount of sales, had worked my way up to a price point that I thought was okay, that's the price I need to be at. I'm getting 12, 13 sales a day, 14 sales a day, sometimes more, sometimes less. Okay, this is a good price point. And then for a long period of time, I just kept it at that price point and never really tested higher price points. And I kept making the product valuable, better boxes, better instruction manual, better branding, better images on my listing, better bullet points. They kept doing all these things, but never really did change the price of my product. And uh, I don't know what it was that triggered me to try to increase the profit on my product. I think what ultimately did it was I lost my my um, I lost my position on page one and really couldn't get it back. I was really used to be top five for for a year. And then ultimately, it, the niche got super competitive. I dropped down to like 10 to 15 to 20 position. And ultimately, I decided, I don't know what made me decide it, but I decided to jump my product price $5 and take it from a $19 price point into a $25 price point, $24.99 to be exact. So it was a $5 profit jump minus Amazon's commission. And ultimately, what I decided to do was I decided to compete with different keywords in my PPC campaigns. And this is going to be the final point of emphasis as far as increasing your sales is advertising and running your auto pricer if you need to. You don't need to do that on on um, on um, private label because you're going to be the only one on the listing. But uh, you're going to want to run ads. And when I ran ads, I realized that my product on certain keywords was competing or ranking high in a niche of really expensive products. So I started discovering all these expensive niches and what was selling there and then inserting my product and at a higher price in those niches actually made people believe that it was a cheaper price in a higher product range or competing with all these $50 price points. All of a sudden they were seeing a $25 price point show up and that was taking a lot of the sales from those top spots in that price point and ultimately was the reason, the biggest reason how I went from a $20 product to a $25 product, which isn't a huge jump. And the same story applies to my fifth product uh, that ultimately I sold for $19. When I was running out of inventory, I decided I'm going to jump this product up to a $39 price point. It's a bundle. It's a great product. The images, the packaging, all great. And for whatever reason, at $29 and at $39, the product was still selling. It, sales were not slowing down, which ultimately gave me the belief that this product could sell well at that higher price point. Now, you'll have to monitor that type of stuff because if you're getting returns, you don't ultimately don't want returns on your product at that price point. So those are things to keep in mind. Price doesn't necessarily need to be low. It needs to be right. The price point needs to be right. And that's the whole point of when you're in sales, if you're selling products in a store, if you work in the sales game, customers come in, they shop for products. It's not about price. It's about comparison. When they, people are asking for a discount, they're not asking you to buy the cheapest product. They just want to know that it's the best price in that comparison. So if you give people just one product idea to look at, they're going to just ask you for the best price. But if you show them three products... You go, well, there's, I got three ideas for you. They're all in the, in the $3,000 price point. 
But this one here is $2,500. And it is just like these other two that are $3,500. Which one do you think they're going to buy? So it's a contrast that you're selling. And you're not just selling low prices or when people want to buy that product, you don't just give them a discount because you think they don't have any money. It's quite the opposite and I prove it time and time again, is that they'll actually spend more on a product that is actually worth less. Uh, and I prove it all the time when I'm buying from Dollarama is I'm buying $4 products. I am reselling them for $15 to $50, $50. Okay, it's not about price. People aren't buying the things. They just want to buy something in comparison or that they emotionally want or connected to. So if you're showing people things, you show them three things, you talk about three things, but... Ultimately, you stick the product in there. So if you want them, if you want to sell them a twenty-five hundred dollar treadmill, you show them two forty-five hundred dollar treadmills and one twenty-five hundred dollar treadmill, and you will sell that twenty-five hundred dollar treadmill. And the same thing applies if you want to sell a forty-five hundred dollar treadmill. You show them two nine thousand dollar treadmills and that forty-five hundred dollar treadmill, and the chances of them buying that forty-five hundred dollar treadmill are extremely high. Which ultimately what people make the mistake of is they're showing them one product, it might be 2000 And they're only having that one product that you recommended and then ultimately they just ask you for a discount on that one product. Whereas if you show them three products that are and two are more expensive and one is cheaper, not only will they not ask you for a discount, they will buy that $4,500 treadmill full price and thank you because you saved the money. You, you didn't let them spend $9,000. So there's a psychology behind it. And it works in threes. Everything works in threes. And so the strategy with price point is the same. You just got to put your products in the mix with products that are slightly more competitive and give it the same values as all those products. Make sure your product can deliver, though. You know, Don't bullshit the system and say it can do all these things if it can't. But if it has similar features and values and quality points, obviously aren't going to be the same, but you can still sell at that value point and you can still um, emotionally connect people to it'll do everything they can. And, and you know, no, one of five may buy the more expensive one. Obviously, in my case, a lot of people are still buying the more expensive one because it is the one they want. But a lot of those sales are coming to me because my price is the, let, is the least in that high category. So another strategy I discovered, and that's a gem for you guys. Uh, you should use it. And let me jump off of Instagram right now. Jump over to the YouTube channel for the rest of the live stream. But if you haven't caught it, make sure you go over to my YouTube channel. Link is in the bio and watch the video. You'll get a lot of great information on how to optimize and make more money off of your listings. All right, guys, so I'm back here on YouTube, and let me just close out there, share that, go there, come back into YouTube land. All right. And I don't know if anybody jumped over, but that's okay. We'll go here, we'll go live, go live. All right. So if you're still with me, give me a shuttle, smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment right now. Leave a question right now. What question do you guys have about selling on Amazon? These are all good topics. Hopefully you're taking notes or hopefully you get some information off here that's useful to you. Um, and yeah, hopefully some of those price points and contrast is the key contrast at the end about increasing your sales contrast selling which is taking your product and putting in with higher price points but comparing the features of those higher price point ones again stealing their information adding it to your bullet point so that people recognize it simulating your photos to be in that niche selling that product in the higher category ultimately when you can afford to sell at a lower price point you're going to get contrast sales out of that. And then pay-per-click, PPC. PPC, run your pay-per-click ads. Learn how to automate an ad, which is really simple. And then learn how to how to take out all the information from, those, from that automated ad. So when you run an automated pay-per-click ad, you ultimately or Amazon is going to give you reports on exactly what customers searched for when they clicked your, your ads. And those reports are going to be useful in you targeting 
certain keywords, um, when you target certain keywords to sell your product in. So for example, if I'm selling thermometers and I put in all these, you know, put in automatic and I see that the word thermometer is my number one impression word and, and it's making me sales, um, I can extract all that information and I can ultimately just target people who are searching the word thermometer. I can also target people who are uh, exactly only searching the word thermometer or broadly searching the word thermometer. So if thermometer shows up, you know, in a sentence or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, I can also extract out, out when I did automatic PPC campaign, I can extract out the words that costed me money that were expensive to advertise on. So maybe I was spending $25 to make a $25 sale, which would be 100% uh, when it comes to ACOS, which is advertising cost of the sale. So 100 means how much did you spend to make how much you sold it for? 25 to sell 25 is 100. If, you, if it costs you $5 to sell 25, that's considered, is that 20? I think that's 20% of, yeah, 20, yeah, 20. If it costs you 250 to sell, or well, if it's cost you yeah, 250 to sell 25, that's 10% ACOS. So 10% of the selling cost. You want that ACOS to be lower than your profit margins. Okay, so if your profit margins are 30%, you want it to be 25% or less, and then you at least getting 5% margins on that. Again, you got to find out what your bottom line, your 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 um your profit margin is, and you have to work under that. But you can extract the words that are costing you too much. You can say, well, Amazon on this particular campaign, this automatic campaign, negative out these words because, and then you don't have to put any more, but you just take them out. And the really reason is because they're costing you too much money. Then once you have that list of all these words that are people are searching for your product, before you go and create campaigns, go research that list. A lot of people skip the process of researching the words that they're going to advertise under. If you're in the marketing world, if you're in sales, you need to know your terminology. You don't just use it and not know what it means. You want to go into those keywords and see what the that those categories bring up, which brings it back to contrast. If it's a, a high quality thermometers is what people are searching and they're finding your product, go look up on <clears throat> Amazon high quality thermometer. Word comes up, okay, it might be in baby, you want might want to put it in all categories and see what's coming up for all categories and high quality thermometer, okay, and now I get thermometers that not necessarily a price point are high, the qualities are just random, they're just random thermometers, nothing on there, so that, now that I studied it, it's not necessarily going to be a category that I'm going to advertise in because it doesn't, doesn't necessarily, um, set my product aside or compare it with anything in there or the price point is even higher so now I might go thermometers and then if you type in the word thermometer another way to find great keywords is just type in a keyword and Amazon will actually extrapolate a bunch of keywords that people search for when with with regards to your specific keyword so I type in thermometer I get thermometer adult thermometer forehead thermometer food thermometer adult oral thermometer for cooking thermometer adult forehead thermometer hygrometer okay so I might look at the hygrometer oh that sounds expensive let's look at hygrometers what kind of thermometers are those and we get a price point of anywhere from $11 to $235 so there's contrast right there but for the most part you know they're all very cheap thermometers in here so I don't want to compete here okay I might keep going until I find a category that is contrast which is the word thermometers pretty contrast because they have $50 thermometers so I might want to compete. Now I got to put my price point a little bit higher, $35 instead of $25 that I was at. And but I now have to make my thermometer appear to be very similar to their thermometers image wise. So I might do a very nice white background. I might get mine in the color blue. I might put a box with mine. Things that I see on these expensive ones, I want to be similar. Okay, I might do a very similar title. Um, and then ultimately what you'll do is you'll start to rank for those particular keywords. So that is how that is all done. 
All right. So I don't actually know how long I've been going for. Let me see if I can jump on here. One. Okay, so this one has been going for an hour and a half. That was super fun. I do see my chat on this window, which is nice. Um, I'm going to say something. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Any questions, let me know. Oh, the chats are coming up pretty cool quickly when I type it. Any questions, let me know. Uh, I know you guys are all sleeping. It's 12.45. I apologize for not being able to get here, get on here when I said, uh, but I really wanted to bring you a different kind of experience, and I think I achieved that today, and I can just grow from now, and that's, that's the great thing. So um, now you get to see things. If you want to see what I'm demonstrating, I don't have to turn my camera around. I can go full screen on myself. I can put mine in the bottom corner. Uh, and then ultimately, I can say goodnight and do this.